Hi guys. I thought I'd do a run up on the isolation transformer testing. Uh, I had uh, a couple three a uh, couple three questions on this, and so I thought I'd go ahead and answer them. One was I didn't make it completely uh, clear on when we first started the video how I had the meters hooked up, and basically at the radio for one thing, and. I had it hooked up this clip lead right here which goes through this wire here and right up to this point which is this black wire which then runs over to the switch right up here and then this wire here is just the part of the line cord and of course then that traces back through the cord and back to the isolation transformer the secondary the isolated side back here via the uh, variac going through the variac and then on the meter the other end of the meter I reference to this power strip which is hooked to the main house and I went to ground which I generally use the uh, uh, soldering iron ground because uh, it was easier to make contact them with the ground inside here but ground, neutral, and hot, just to show that you're going to get a voltage on these. Uh, also, I didn't bother to use the tell you one term, and it's called ghost ghost vo uh, voltages. You can look that up. It just basically references the fact and talks about how high impedance meters can show voltages that uh, aren't really there. They're just picking up basically a signal. In the air, and uh, but the point was what the whole point of the of the test was to show that if you use a high impedance meter, it's going to look like your isolation transformer is not working. But to answer the question, we went from one side of the meter was hooked into the different, you know, hot, neutral, and ground of this power strip which is plugged in to the house the house wiring so this ground is earth ground and then the other side was hooked to the B minus side of the radio and uh, which is leads directly through the power switch right to one side of the power cord which then in turn was hooked to the isolated or secondary side of the isolation transformer so I hope that uh, cleared that up. The second thing was, um, question was about the DC, the actual DC resistance of the windings. And on this one here, it works out. Um, this particular transformer is around 2.7 ohms for the secondary and 2.7 ohms for the primary but that's just this isolation transformer uh, various isolation transformers can have various different DC re uh, resistances and you can't use really you should never really um, say trust DC resistances as far as figuring out uh, your uh, turns ratio because you can have a secondary and a primary having two different wire gauges and that consequently will change what you're measuring in resistance on DC because DC is just me measuring the wire resistance and you can look up wire gauges wire sizes and wire gauges online and find a table and in that table it will give you uh, a bunch of information about the wire for each gauge but one of the main uh, one of the big points of the information is that it tells you how many ohms per thousand feet the wire is the larger the gauge number you know higher that number goes up the smaller the diameter of the wire and the smaller the diameter of the wire the higher the resistance in ohms for per thousand feet so if 
if you're you can have a one-to-one -one transformer where the secondary is uh, wound with uh, you know a couple gauges maybe smaller wire than the primary and but they still wound wound them out so that they elect uh, as far as the transformer goes they have a one-to-one -one ratio and turns ratio but the resistances can be uh, would be different uh, in this case it actually works out but I have seen some where the primary was in the in the store of around four or five ohms and the secondary was around two or three ohms and I've seen them opposite of that just the reverse so that's how come I really didn't go over um, the actual resistances and and of the windings and that is not really going to give you a lot of information anyway if you take an isolation transformer or any transformer and measure resistances unless you have a um, a reference a service information reference that tells you that you know that primary should be say 4 ohms or 5 ohms or 2 ohms or whatever and the secondaries should have you know a certain ohmage value that's the only time that DC uh, resistance can give you a, a, a really good information uh, if you work with enough power transformers and radios and TVs you kind of get a feel what the average number of them have for a primary resistance a high voltage secondary resistance uh, filament winding voltage uh, resistances and stuff and uh, so that you know maybe the transformer is fine <coughs> excuse me but otherwise um, and since I don't have no actual service information I just got a schematic for this it which does not have any resistances on it uh, but it seems to work fine so it's not getting hot uh, if there was a short in in the windings uh, it either show show up that the voltages were off and as well as possibly showing up with the transformer getting hot uh, yeah, real quick fairly quickly so the the biggest thing I wanted to show is how to test to make sure it is isolated and there's no shorts that way now there's another reference made uh, or question or comment that was looking at and basically looking at more modern uh, isolation transformers in the last uh, probably 30 years uh, isolation transformers have uh, split into two categories I'm not sure exactly when the split was but in the last 30 years anyway uh, it may be longer than that when I'm sitting here trying to remember back time sometimes things get off you know, I still think my children are still young or I can still remember when they were young but anyway they have split off in two categories one is what is known as a consumer grade or consumer which is generally more or less used uh, you see most of these used in hospitals and and some places like that uh, and then you have what is called tech versions uh, of isolation transformers which is used for you know uh, technical repair work uh, design stuff like that in other words used on electronics benches and basically the big difference is is on the consumer grade due to national electric code re uh, requirements they're not really truly isolated they actually require not only a three-prong plug on the what is, would be considered the isolated or secondary side but they also require that that winding be connected to that ground terminal and that ground terminal then connected to earth ground so basically you're connecting the isolated secondary winding back to earth ground and so now at that point it's not an isolation transformer anymore uh, so you know you you want to be careful about those if you're buying new ones you want to look at and see what they are uh, it provides for common mode what they call common mode noise reduction 
which is why hospitals use them because a lot of the equipment uh, would be affected by this such as heart monitors and things of this nature so these here this isotap the RCA version of it which RCA sold out to Viz but um, and, and pretty much anything you find a lot of the stuff you find on eBay of the vintage variety of isolation transformers generally will have a two-prong plug over here they may have three prong over here but they have a two-prong and but the main thing is their true isolation or their tech uh, level or tech grade uh, isolation transformer now if you was to buy a new isolation transformer and you're either not sure or you know for a fact it's consumer grade then all you gotta do is open it up and disconnect that ground strap that goes from ground to the neutral side of the plug on the isolated side or the secondary side once you disconnect that you got a good to go isolation transformer so I hope that answers these questions um, on you know uh, what you guys had as far as checking resistance and and uh, where I hooked up on the radio and things like uh, and dealing with the d two grades of isolation transformers prior to that time of 30 or so years ago whenever it was that they uh, NAC got involved in this and, and we split it and we started doing this stuff uh, having a consumer grade and a tech grade all isolation transformers could be just basically tech grade isolation transformers um, so uh, the you you so if you buy something like a this or you buy something like the like uh, you know the Syncor PR57 or you know some of those style they were um, they're made for they're fully isolated there's no ground there there's no nothing attaching that secondary winding back to ground and thus making it dangerous so I think it was really the main things if you guys wanna I, I've got a picture of the uh, schematic of this one hopefully I can kinda zoom in it's not the best picture but this would be the switch that's on the front that has it you know 105 110 115 120 125 130 volts and then of course off position it's uh on the primary side it's just primary taps um as well as the high medium and low it's basically coming off of different taps on to the primary uh there's the plug going in uh, it's got a, a thermostat uh, protection for the transformer as well as a circuit breaker although mine actually don't have a circuit breaker this is just a teeny bit newer uh, one and then your secondary side which is how they get them low medium and high is from taps off the secondary and all this voltage here uh, these different voltages that's on the panel on the switch those are your what you measure your line voltage at and then you can set the isolation transformer to that or as close as possible and then you you're you're pretty much equal to on your secondary side what it should be so that that's what those is there for is this is set to line volts so if your line volts is around 120 121 100 somewhere like that you can set it there if it's more closer to 125 then you would set it there you know so that's that's what it's for so I hope that answered all the questions um, yes I've got the radio tore down I figured it's on the bench and I need to clean off some rust off the chassis plus getting it tore down makes it a little easier to get the uh, wires unsoldered uh, to replace components and uh, get it cleaned up and uh, so I thought while it was on the bench it's a simple radio so it won't take long to actually go through it and uh, I'll replace all the caps and and anything out of tolerance as far as resistors and get her up to park uh, 
shoot some uh, stuff in the uh, potentiometers to make sure they're nice and good and clean and working right. So, anyway, until the next video, thanks for watching, and I hope this answered your questions. Uh, if there's any other questions, uh, I'll try to answer them. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day, and see you later.